This video was made possible by 458 Patreon supporters and by our proud sponsor, Raycon. Reporters Without Borders is a non-profit international organization which aims to safeguard the right to freedom of information around the world. Every year, since 2002, Reporters Without Borders has released the World Press Freedom Index, which ranks 180 countries across the globe, based on the independence of their media and the safety of those who report on its behalf. The level of press freedom country to country is sure to surprise many, with the 2019 report classifying a mere 8% of nations as having a good standard of freedom and a staggering 84% falling below the satisfactory standard. In a world where technology is able to progress at a breakneck rate, it would be easy to assume that the progress of other such luxuries would follow the same trends. However, with press freedom actually falling from the previous year, the importance of having freely accessible information is more significant than ever before. The 2010s gave rise to an explosion of social media, with over 39% of every person on earth being an active participant. With this came serious problems that very few had comprehended. Algorithms with the sole intention of increasing user attention started to push people into increasingly more radicalized echo chambers. Companies could predict what we wanted before we knew it ourselves, and authoritarian governments saw an opportunity to forge a fabricated truth they had always dreamed of creating. Many nations worldwide have incredibly strict guidelines of what can and cannot be reported by journalists, and in many cases, coloring outside of these bold black lines can result in a reporter losing their job or even their life. As a result, younger generations who grow up in these tightly controlled nations are able to be manipulated with disinformation, with little to no ability to discover objective truth. In nations where official media channels are so tightly controlled, frequently misunderstood mediums are often not given the same level of attention by government censors. When even politicians of the more free nations have for decades viewed video games as a scapegoat for violent outbursts, it shouldn't come as a surprise that leaders in charge of totalitarian regimes view the medium as nothing more than a distraction for a nation's youth. When the video game phenomenon that is Minecraft was unleashed upon the world in 2009, it would be hard to imagine the impact it would have over the following decade and how it would go from a one-man project to the highest selling video game of all time. In a game where people have created entire cities, houses that build themselves, and even working computers, developing a way for journalists to circumnavigate censorship would be easier than creating a working slime farm. In keeping with its mission statement of safeguarding the right to freedom of information, Reporters Without Borders teamed up with Blockworks, a UK design company that specializes in Minecraft creation, and developed an ambitious 12 and a half million block library aimed at bringing even a tiny slice of press freedom to those who live among its absence. It would have been easy to simply create a humble house filled with transcribed books, which any veteran Minecraft player could complete within a day, but this wouldn't be enough to catch public attention. The managing director of Blockworks, James Delaney, a former student of architecture and longtime player of the game, saw this as an opportunity to flex their considerable creative muscles. Mr. Delaney and his team wanted the library to have a classical and formal style, and compared the design to that of architecture you'd see in the British Museum or the New York Public Library. The first significant landmark a new player will see when approaching the library is an enormous fist holding a pen, the official Reporters Without Borders, symbol for press freedom. This imposing hand, along with the formal style, is usually used by governments to reinforce their position of authority, however in this case, it was deliberately mirrored to represent what the project aims to eradicate. Upon entering the monumental structure, the player is greeted with a room so large, it could probably support its own weather system. Looking below, visitors are able to see a map of the world, 
color-coded using the World Press Freedom Index, and high above, sits flags from every corner of the globe. If this was a real structure, it would be considered a wonder of the modern world. The library consists of five main rooms, dedicated to five nations with some of the lowest freedom for journalists on earth. The first, is Russia. A nation not historically known for its naval prowess, is curiously represented by a kraken, enveloping the forbidden journalistic texts, in the center of the room. Although comparatively more developed than other nations on this list, Russia is ranked 149th, out of 180, in terms of press freedom. The sea monster is representative, of the government's control over the internet, as the nation works tirelessly, to develop its own infrastructure, to make online privacy within the country, virtually impossible. Vietnam, is another unfortunate victim of government censorship, ranking as the fourth worst in the world. The themed room, features a large winding labyrinth, leading to the articles written in both English, and Vietnamese, to those who can navigate its complexity. The process that is equally intriguing, and frustrating, is surely to mirror the experiences of those within the nation, who attempt to seek the truth. The tomes tell the story, of how journalists are subject to progressively harsher punishment, by the communist party in power, and how they are forced to compete against a cyber warfare military branch, that now has 10,000 people under its command. Mexican journalism on the other hand, is dissimilar from that of other troubled nations, as instead of competing with government censorship, reporters are instead facing the very powerful, and incredibly dangerous organized crime syndicates, that operate within the country. Mexico remains one of the deadliest countries on earth for journalists, with those who go against corrupted officials often being warned, murdered, or abducted, never to be seen again. The Mexican Room features 12 shrines, each one for a Mexican journalist killed, for speaking out against injustice. Saudi Arabia, is represented by an enormous cage made of obsidian, a substance that veteran Minecraft players will know, is exceptionally difficult to break. The country is on the top 3, for the most amount of journalists in prison, with 3 times as many now, compared to just 3 years ago. The individual featured in the tomes in the center of the confine, is Jamil Khashoggi, a career journalist, who was murdered and dismembered by the Saudi Arabian state. We now come to Egypt, a land that would appear to be older than time, and unfortunately, upholds laws that are as equally draconian, as they once were, many generations ago. The tipped scales representing the long prison sentences, that would be given to those who dare speak out, or protest against the government. As a result, it has become a common practice within the country, to hide the identities, of those who would criticize the corruption of those in power. Even though millions of creations have been made in Minecraft, that are jaw-dropping in their own right, very few are close to being this significant. It's easy to forget, when perusing these grand halls, that the information stored in these digital books, are illegal in the nations that they represent. It's fair to judge the very existence of this video, as obviously a secret stockpile of knowledge doesn't stay hidden, when everyone knows about its presence. However, if the officials of a nation attempt, to ban a video game, about people building houses with their friends, it puts into perspective the absurdity of their government, and the flimsy foundation of which it occupies. This digital library, is phenomenal in its own right, and it's incredible to think, how long it must have taken, to construct its immaculate halls, and intricate gardens, but ultimately, it's the stories behind this creation, that make it so outstanding. There's a reason the saying goes, that the pen is mightier than the sword, because if it wasn't, corrupt and powerful states wouldn't go to such lengths, to silence those who only seek to speak the truth. For those living under governments dismissive of press freedom, it would appear impossible to navigate censorship, misinformation, and a lifetime of indoctrination, but perhaps with an accessible place, that even a child could discover with a 10 year old laptop, they can finally gain the perspective, to find the truth. Most people who play games, will usually have a dedicated pair of headphones, that they'll use to sound hoard, but sometimes these headsets can be too thick for outside the house. This is where Akon's earbuds come in, the smaller, wireless alternative, for those who embrace the cruel kiss of sunlight. 
Raycon's latest, everyday, E25 earbuds, have 6 hours of playtime, compact design, and comes compatible with every single smartphone company that refuses to include a headphone jack. While their competitors are trying to make their most loyal customers pay a thousand dollars for a fucking stand, Raycon is asking half the price for their premium offering. But don't take the word of some idiot on the internet, trust instead in the endorsement of Mr. Snoop Dogg himself, who has proven himself to be both a world-class rapist and very average gamer. So that was a tough loss. Um, how do you feel after that? How the fuck you think I feel? Raycon asked me to show myself wearing my pair of E25s, but for obvious reasons this ran into some challenges, so here's a depiction in Microsoft Paint. Viewers who go to buyraycon.com forward slash swag will get 15% off their order and join everyone else in the Raycon family. Raycon, not making you pay a thousand dollars for a stand since 2017.